I'm Phil, and today we're talking about friction. Okay. Oh, <laughs> friction! We did it! We got it, everybody! How many takes was that? Oh. Well, still, we got it. Good work. <laughs> As you may have already guessed, today is about friction. And here's a really easy friction experiment you can do at home. All you need is a piece of wood. You don't need the frame, and you don't have to uh, do anything fancy to it. Just put one end up on a couch or a coffee table and make a nice ramp. Then you want something to slide down that ramp. And I like to use a piece of wood. Now check it out. Wood ramp, wood block. The friction is so much that the wood slides to there. Now what I like to do is take a little flag and mark the results. Recording the results is good science. Now here's where it gets fun. Get another surface and attach it to the wood, like carpet and wood. Let's see how far this goes. Hmm, not as good. All right, record the results. Cardboard. Ooh, nicely done, cardboard. Foam. And this wood has been waxed, like on a floor wax, which makes it nice and slippery. Let's see how that does. Ooh. And now the ultimate ice attached to wood. This is actually harder to do than I thought. All right, let's try it out. Ooh, ice, the clear winner. Not a big surprise right there. And get this, once you've done all of that, you can change the surface of the ramp. You can go to waxed wood, carpet, foam. Cardboard, but, and, and well, yeah, you get the idea. Record all the results, compare them, and there you go. Friction ramp experiment. And that's what we're gonna be maxing out today. So come on, let's go. Check it out, I've improved the portal interface. Watch this. Yeah, and then I can scroll through experts, and oh, this is gonna be fun. And I've got my coordinates right there. Oh. Um, that's never happened. Okay. Silita and I are maxing out our spinning top. Based on our small version, we decided to make one with as much mass as possible. So we got a 20 kilogram weight and welded it to a metal shaft. Will this work the same way? Well, let's look at the science. Why does a top spin? Well, let's start with Newton's first law, which is an object at rest tends to stay at rest, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. But the in motion has another part. That object also wants to go in a straight line. If you think of a bowling ball rolling along, it would need another force to act upon it to make it change direction. We say that a moving object has momentum. Now, a top doesn't go in a straight line, it spins around but it still has momentum. It's an object in motion. And even though it's spinning, it still does want to go in a straight line. It's just that that straight line is here. We call this angular momentum. To make a top move this way or that way would take an outside force. So it stays upright as long as it has enough momentum. But when it slows down, there's less momentum and it becomes harder to resist external forces like gravity which will eventually want to make it topple. Our top has a lot of mass, which means it'll have a lot of angular momentum when it gets spinning. It's just a matter of getting it spinning fast enough. So should we spin it? Yeah, let's spin it. Let's You're see spinning. if we can get it to work. Hey, okay. Spin, 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 spin. Are we going to let go? In three? Wait, wait, wait. I can't get it. What? Yeah. Oh. Oh, wait, um, wait. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, uh, Not fast enough. We need something to help us get it spinning faster. faster. Maybe a rope? A rope, yeah. Should grab a rope. That was my like idea, too, a rope, because the small one uses a rope. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'll go grab a rope. So, wrapping the rope up. I'll let you wrap the rope okay. up. I'll get my holder back on top. Spin it counterclockwise. We attach the rope and wind it up. You want to make it super clean. This is some of the best coiled rope I've ever seen. I'm going to pull the rope. You're going to hold on to it, but I can't pull really hard. 
because you won't be able to hold it up. Because yeah. we don't have to pull hard. We just have to get it going fast. Yes. Silita keeps her hand on the block at the top, and I pull. Ready? Wait a minute. We'll get all the way. Oh. Whoa. It's spinning a lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> it's still spinning, but it's wobbling. Uh oh, careful. Oh, there it goes. It works, but just barely. It might spin better, it might spin straighter. Yeah. If we had it spinning, something help us spin it faster. Yes. Um, faster with more power. Faster with more power. Hmm. Better sandcastles in 80 seconds. Building sandcastles is fun, but you can't use dry sand because it doesn't stay up very well. You have to use wet sand. But even if you use wet sand, it doesn't hold a lot of weight. But if you use sand with the power of science, it does hold the weight. Dry sand, wet sand, science sand. Here's what's going on. Say these ping pong balls are grains of sand. When they're dry, they don't hold together very well. That's why you can't build a sand castle out of dry sand. But if you get the sand wet a little bit, the grains of sand will hold together a little better because of the surface tension of the water. That's why it's easier to build a sandcastle with wet sand, but they still won't hold much weight. But if you add something that creates even more friction between the grains of sand, like say, this sandpaper, it will hold the weight. So here's what you do. Take window screen and cut it into circles. Make sure you get an adult's permission first, okay? Deal? Put in a layer of sand, pack it down, and put in a circle of window screen. And a layer of sand, pack it down, circle of window screen. Then, you guessed it, layer of sand, pack it down, circle of window screen. The window screens are gonna add more friction between the grains of sand and will make your sand castle strong. Strong with the power of science. And then uh, you can put lots of weight on it. And there you go. Sand with the power of science. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, I had to max it out. Let's see how strong science sand really is. Huh? Ha 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 ha! Science! Here's another experiment that's all about balance. Take a pencil and try to balance it on its tip. Doesn't work that well, does it? But if you take a pencil and stick it through a circle of cardboard and try it again, it works. The reason it's because this circle is spinning, it creates a force that keeps the pencil standing up. As long as the circle is spinning fast enough, it counteracts the force of gravity. Because of the conservation of angular momentum, the conservation of angular momentum, the conservation of angular momentum. Science Max presents ways to sound super smart. A top will balance when it's spinning. It works because it spins. But why say it that way when you can impress your friends and all the adults you know by saying conservation of angular momentum? Why does a top spin? Because of the conservation of angular momentum. Between you and me, we know that it boils down to the fact that it's spinning. But conservation of angular momentum is how you say it if you're studying physics in university. Just remember to thank Science Max when you impress everyone by telling them a top balances because of, say it with me, the conservation of angular momentum. Now, let's max this out. Gyroscopic force is pretty amazing. Because this bike tire is spinning, it's hard for me to move it. But it's really hard to see how much it resists a change in orientation unless I do this. Ha ha ha! It looks like it's defying gravity. 
but really it's because the amount of force needed to change its orientation is more than the force of gravity pulling down on it. It won't last forever, only as long as the bike tire keeps spinning. But you gotta admit, it's pretty cool science.